All right, so we got why the Dark Angels were the most powerful legions. Let's go to the video. G'day, guys and gals. Major Dark kill. Angels, clear that both the Dark Angels and their Primarch, the Lion, are my favorite legion. This oh. might make this video seem a bit of a biased kiss ass. We all, we all know mine is uh, the Salamanders. I just had to let you guys know real quick. But after spending a lot of time with the Horus Heresy lore recently, reading over like a dozen heresy books, Primarch books, and short stories, it's become abundantly clear that not every legion was made equal. Some Primarchs and their legions are just like straight up better than others. Whether okay. it be due to the power and influence of their Primarch or the legion's own tactics and culture, there is just like a definitive tier list. At the top of that list, is the Dark Angels. The Dark Angels have overcome foes that 100% would have spelled the extinction of lesser legions. The Rungdung would have annihilated the Emperor's children. The Crave would have slaughtered the White Scars. Yet against the Bastion of the Dark Angels, these unstoppable forces were crushed. Oh, there wow. There's a reason why the Emperor chose the Dark Angels as his super weapon. It's because they were the only ones that had the discipline, restraint, and will to use such messed up weapons of war. Before we get started, Wait. sometimes the stars align and brands that I've been accustomed uh, is this to. Is this an ad? Okay, I'm gonna talk while he's doing an ad. These now listen, I'm pretty sure that they, bro, don't the dark angels, don't they use so like slaves and stuff like that? They use slaves and stuff, right? I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. Here in the office, lightly. like, you know, um, uh, bro, this is menace talk about the dark angels, bro, over like the past few videos. I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I don't like them, bro. They're menaces. I mean, I guess it works because like they're so tough or whatever, but at the same time, bro, bro, they using slaves, bro. The methods they use to take out people is crazy, bro. They, bro, they torture people. I'm, I, listen, I think you know that's the dark angels, but if I'm wrong, I'm oh, that looks good. Hold up. The meals are delicious. Never get old due to their variety. Well, what is he cooking? What is she? Not to mention, they only take like half an hour to cook per meal, shorter than it takes for a food delivery. So not only am I saving money getting bigger and better meals, but I've also learned how to cook, which is a massive boost in your quest to get laid. Chicks love a man that can cook. So to save your time- I mean, bro, girls do love a dude that can cook, bro. Macros That's and true. That's true. Code POG Major Oct 65. It should auto apply if you use my link. It'll save you 65% off and free shipping. God damn, you'd have to be dumber than a drunk- 65? The didgeridoo to turn that one down. Cheers to hello- 65%? Today we'll go over why the Dark Angels and their Primarch were the greatest legion. They're not. They're not. The Salamanders are. Rather than, you know, just retelling their lore. A key part of this video is how powerful the Dark Angels were, not currently are. Their modern day chapter is a bit of a uh, meme. Then they fall off. Way. So we'll they fell off. Focus on them during the Crusade and the Heresy. Uh, let's get into let's it. Let's get into yeah. it. Here we go. The Dark Angels put a lot of pride and emphasis on the fact that they were the first legion, the Astartes whom all others are just mere copies of. Their roots go all the way back into the Unification Wars. They were the legion that helped put down the Thunder Warriors' rebellion. For as long as the galaxy has had Astartes, it has had Dark Angels. As the Dark Angels were the Emperor's first and most numerous Astartes legion, they were the first to be tasked with all the really fucked up missions, killing witch lords, destroying tainted lands, being exposed to a lot of unpleasant Xeno shit. That I mean, it's probably like, that's probably like how they were strong though. I mean, cause listen, if you have like, I mean, well, let's say for instance, like if you have like, um, if you have like, three sons right if you have three sons and the oldest son is the one that went through like the harder life or whatever or not even just harder life but he's the one that went through like most of the stuff such as like you know bullies and stuff like that or or fights growing up and stuff like that i mean he's gonna turn out to be more tough than you know the younger brother who don't really go through all that you get what i'm saying like i mean so like hearing that they went through like a lot of that stuff off the bat i mean it, it, i mean i can i can kind of see why they're like why they're so like you know while they were so like tough and stuff like that. I don't know now, I think they fell off now, but we'll see. It would drive others insane. As such, they became very good at keeping secrets. The things they fought and killed would not be recorded in the annals of history as they were not glorious victories. Nobody recorded the fights? ruthless purgings that had to be done. The first legion were reliable, effective, and didn't gossip. Small talk was a no-no for the Dark Angels, and to discourage non-superhumans from trying to even talk with them, they began adorning their armor with skulls, bones, and other aspects of death. Ooh. They truly were the Emperor's own angels of death. So they were straight intimidation. They was like, bro, we don't even want to gossip with you little peasants. You know what, bro? Let's make ourselves look intimidating. Oh, okay, I like that. I, I kind of like that. I mean, everything else they do, 
is uh, but I kind of like that. Whilst other legions were holding parades on easily compliant human worlds, the Dark Angels were sent to root out the galaxy's monsters from their own decrepit dens. So as we see, even prior to the discovery of their Primarch, the Dark Angels were one of the first and foremost legions, the Emperor's favourite even. This is heavily contrasted to the Blood Angels, who were a bunch of fuckhead berserkers that would have made Angron wet, or the White Scars, who were so scattered that they felt no camaraderie with their own legion, or even the Raven Guard, who were basically just Horus' stealth specialists at this point. Not to mention the borderline extinct Thousand Sons and Emperor's Children. Wait, so wait, this was like the le this was the Emperor's favorite legion. What about the Salamanders? Yo, Emperor, bro, let me find out you playing favorites, bro. Bro, you being weird like that, I me, mean, bro. No more you send on that chip. No, I ain't gonna say nothing. However, when they found their Primark, they went balls to the walls. Despite being found a bit later on than others, including Horus, the line was able to rapidly take over his legion and raise its effectiveness to a point that within a few years, his tally of victories had caught up to and potentially even surpassed Horus's. He ditched the legion's death like visage and installed his own knightly and honorable aesthetic in its stead. Unlike a few of the other legions, such as the Death Guard or the World Eaters, whose meeting with their Primarchs was jarring and actually set the legion back, the Lion was able to smoothly combine the Dark Angel's grim and thankless determination with the honor and culture of Caliban. Both Caliban and the Dark Angels were great at keeping secrets, so this gelled together really well. With the Lion at their head, the Dark Angels were set to easily overtake the Ultramarines and the Lunar Wolves' glories to become the indisputable Master Legion. Then, the Rundung happened. Mankind encountered a Xeno race so powerful that it threatened to destroy the Imperium then and there. It's actually strongly theorized that it was the Rundung who caused the demise of at least one of the lost Primarch. Who was the, what the, who was the Rundung? I told y'all, every single time like I load up a, a Warhammer video, bro, I'm learning something new. Who the hell is the Rundung? Bro, that sounds like something off of, uh, bro, out of Batman. Who was the run done? Let me look it up. See, all right, I'm gonna play a video. I'm gonna look it up. I might have to add it to the, to, you know, uh, to the queue. I might have to add it to the reaction queue. I can't lie to you because I don't even know who the run done is. To face this apocalyptic threat, the Dark Angels were chosen by the Emperor as humanity's champion to spearhead the counterattack. Although there were nine other legions that ended up getting involved, the Dark Angels took the brunt of it, losing 50,000 Astartes. No other legion came close to losing that many during the Great Crusade. To then ice it off, just after those massive losses, the Lion led his Dark Angels against the King of the Crave, the most powerful Xeno in the galaxy, losing over a third of his entire fleet's mortal crew and oh thousands my. more Astartes. Talk about a double kick to the fucking nuts. Oh my god. The Wolves and Ultramarines didn't surpass the Dark Angels because they were better, it was because the Dark Angels took on the most powerful enemies of mankind in the galaxy and got wounded as a result. Wow. Here's a fun fact about the Angels' fight with the Crave. The Dark Angels are always given shit and meme for their secrecy. This is fair enough. The modern day Dark Angels are almost laughable with how over the top their secrecy is. But during the Crusade era, it served them well. When one of the Angels, a Knight of the Centaurus, which was one of the many specialists. Oh, wait, I got a question though. So, why, why do people make fun of their secrecy? I mean, if, if it worked from. I mean, okay. Like nowadays, maybe like a it may be like a different time or whatever. But if, if if the secrecy thing worked for them before, why are people laughing at them now? Because like they keep secrets and they don't really like you know talk and stuff like that. Like what's what's the meaning about on that? General question. I'm not like you know whatever. Like I, I ask an actual question. When the Legion had his mind combed by a Crave warrior, the Crave got extremely frustrated as the Angel had no idea who his fellow knights actually were. Hence, the Crave couldn't locate or lock onto them. On top of that, the only reason why the Dark Angels are able to use their forbidden arsenal without getting universally censured by the rest of the Imperium is because they don't even tell most of their own legion what they have locked away. Speaking of which, what do they actually have locked away? Fair. Well, one of their spicier weapons are enslaved men of iron, genuine AI warriors that have proven to be extremely effective against psychic enemies. They also have special guns and bullets that flay your soul from your body and destroy it, meaning unbreakable psychic barriers are suddenly very breakable. They were basically given all the weapons that still remained on Terra from the Dark Age of Technology. I can't lie to you, I, I keep secrets too. If I had weapons like that, that would like, that would like take somebody's soul from their body. If I had weapons like that, and I had like these AI like warriors or whatever, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm keeping a secret too. Nobody will know, bro. Only me, bro. Only me, the captain of the ship, and, and the person who locks the doors of the secret room will know. I'm gonna be honest with you. No, nobody else would know. Okay, I see why. I see why they were keeping secrets. Okay. 
the Emperor was actually going to use the Dark Angels and this ancient non-Mechanicus technology to conquer Mars if the Martians weren't going to be his bitch. So that means the Emperor had given them tech that was beyond even Mars. When it came time for the Emperor to elect the War Master, quite a few people thought he would choose the Lion. The Lion did at least, that's for sure. However, he ended up picking Horus instead. Why was that? Is it because Horus was a better Primarch? Fuck no. The Lion was a league above his brothers, except for maybe Sanguinius and Magnus. Being the presence of the Lion was very intense. Some Astartes, who had no issue looking into their own Primarch's eyes, would have to fight the urge to kneel whenever they were in the presence of the Lion. It was said that the only Primarch who left the same impression as the Emperor was the Lion. He wasn't insecure, never doubted himself, and commanded absolute authority. Contrast that with Fulgrim, who was in a constant state of borderline meltdown over his insecurity, or Horus, whose insecurity and ego was exploited to turn him to chaos. The difference is startling. The Emperor knew this and even said to the Lion that one of the reasons why that he chose Horus as War Master is because Horus craves attention. He needs to be patted on the head and given a bone. Oh, However, the wow. Lion doesn't. Loyalty and duty is its own reward. The Lion finds celebration and glory to be vain and unnecessary. He knows he's a fucking beast at what he does. He doesn't need a bunch of retards banging the drum to show him. Wow. So, so, so the Lion, so, yo, we gotta catch it, bro. Bro, we gotta catch up on a lion, dude, bro. Listen, I'm gonna be honest, bro. Hey, the lion kind of sound like us, to be honest with you. Bro we, don't, bro, we don't really need the applause. We just go out and we just do it. I'm talking about me and you. Like, bro, we just go out and we just do it. Like, okay. See, see the lion, see, I can resonate with the lion because that's something that we did that, that we do on a daily basis, obviously. You know, like us, you know. Uh, But to be honest with you, bro, but like, I'm gonna be honest, bro. Like, people like Horace, and obviously Horace, he's a fictional character, stuff like that. But bro, like there's in real like in real life, bro, there's people like Horus, bro. They need to clap. They they need a, a, a applause. They need to clap for everything. Bro, if they wake up, it's an achievement. Like it, it, it's just crazy. So and yo, Horus, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. Yo, the salamanders, they need the beats, bro. I'm, no, 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 no. My bad. You need the beats from the salamanders. Let's just keep that real. You need to get beat up immediately. I mean, obviously, you're dead now, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. Yeah, you're dead. Horus is there, right? Didn't, like, the Emperor, like, wipe him and, like, took half of his... Didn't he, like, take his soul or whatever? I think so. The secondary reason as to why the Emperor didn't choose the line as War Master is because during the Emperor's future scrying and 4D chess game with Malkador, it was shown that whoever the Emperor picked as War Master would eventually betray the Imperium. So there's a good chance that the Emperor valued the line so much that he wouldn't risk losing him by placing him in... That makes sense. Wow. So the Emperor was like, okay, cool. Whoever I pick is gonna turn on me anyway. So I'm not going to pick the lion or whatever. I'm not going to pick him because he's just a goat. He's like, he's literally like, you know, the greatest of all time. And I don't want him to turn against me. Like he, he's, he's straight. He's good. He doesn't, he, you don't even need it, bro. You don't even need this position. Go ahead and just keep doing you. I'm going to pick Horace because his ego is going to get in the way. He's going to turn on me. Makes sense. Okay. Roll. When the heresy broke out, all the traitor Primarchs were shit scared of the Dark Angels. The Blood Angels were tricked into a demonic ambush. Even the Ultramarines were thought to be easily beatable by the word bearers. But the Dark Angels, no. Horus literally did everything he could to get them out of the way and delay them. He sent them across the galaxy before the heresy, then he sent the Night Lords to slow them down. In response, the Dark Angels were able to ambush the Night Lords. Yes, they ambushed the Ambusher Legion, and they killed a shitload of them effectively sidelining them for the rest of the heresy. The Lion was also able to beat Conrad in a clean 1v1, despite Conrad's ability to see the future. The Lion had this uncanny ability with his sword, subconsciously changing his strokes mid-strike, which fucked with Conrad's foresight. Even Sanguinius was unsure if he would be able to beat Conrad. Yo, this Lion dude is hard. Bro, we need, bro, we need to check up on him more. The Lion... Bro Hold up. Well, I'm going to look it up while we watch the video. The just like straight up did. I'm when looking this up. out of the way, Horus had to pray that the mega warp storm cutting the galaxy in half would be enough to hold them back. It was effective, but the line decided to destroy pretty much every trader world while he waited for the chance to breach the storm and reach Terra. Not only did that fuck with the trader supply lines and recruits, but it also meant they had virtually no strongholds to retreat to. This is why the trader legion suffered so many casualties on their way back to the Eye of Terra. If they had their homeworlds intact, maybe they could have mounted a defense and counterattack, but instead they had to leg it into the vicious and unknown territory of the Eye. When Horus discovered the line was only weeks away from Terra, he shat himself. 
If the lion arrived, the siege would end in the Imperium's victory. Now think about all that and then remember, he had this much of an impact on the heresy despite losing over 50,000 marines just before it started. He was sent out of the way, then attacked by the Night Lord's Legion and was stuck behind a warp storm. With them being so powerful, it's only fitting that the Lion and the Dark Angel's demise would not come from Xenos or other legions, but the Dark Angels itself. On his return to Caliban, the Lion was ambushed by fallen Dark Angels, being put into a coma at the heart of the Dark Angels' main oh! A coma he remains into this day, but I believe won't last much longer. They put him into a coma? Oh, bro, he didn't even know that the PS5 came out three years ago. Oh, dang, bro. Bro, they're player haters, bro. Bro, the bro, this lion dude sound hard, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. Can somebody recommend me a uh, recommend me a video that we can like watch and learn more about the lion dude, bro? This is my first time ever hearing about him, bro. He sounds hard, bro. He sounds like you and I. Like I'm gonna be honest with you. With the loss of their prime mark, the dark I like him. Travel a bit. Their secrecy became a negative as the shame of their own Legion brothers betraying the Lion shook them to their core. So whilst they may not be likable as a chapter, they are still wildly powerful. And if the Lion returns, unites the Dark Angel's successes and combines them with the Fallen, he'll have a Legion of Angels numbering in the hundreds of thousands. A force that would shake the galaxy, either acting as salvation to mankind or as a challenge to Gilliman's rule. This is why I'm so really? for the Lion's return. It wouldn't just be this boon for the Imperium. It would create a complicated, delicate situation. Maybe he even creates his own, like, mini Imperium on the dark side of the galaxy. Regardless, the Lion and his Dark Angels were the best Legion. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the- Shout out to Major Kill. Yo, game works. Make it happen. Yo, wake him up immediately. We need to wake- Yo, wake up the Lion immediately, bro. We need to have an all-out war, bro. I'm talking about- the lion, hundreds of thousands of angels. Obviously, like, you know, I'm going to be there as well. Bro, this lion dude, I didn't know he was that. Bro, yo, I'm going to be honest with you. This lion dude kind of sounds like me. Wow. Interesting. Wow. I, yo, I finally found somebody in this series that sounds like something that I would do if I was in a series. You get what I'm saying? Wowzers, comment down below. What do you guys think about this? We got to, listen. We gotta like react to like the uh, the lion or whatever, but we gotta react to him. I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, it, it's kind of it's kind of crazy how they you know how they tried to team up on him and jump him, and now he's in a coma. He is in a coma. It doesn't mean that he's dead, but he is. He bro, ooh man, he knocked out, out like a light, uh, uh, like a light. He out like a light. But if he does wake up, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be right there, bro, eating popcorn, bro, watching all this may uh, mayhem go crazy. Comment down below, man. What do you guys think about this? Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and I'm gonna see you guys next time out and. Peace out.